the next story in the book, which is Thrown Away Shadows and Other Stories, is The Bad Man. This one's read in, uh, written in first person. It was a legal holiday, and the banks being closed, I resolved to pass the afternoon in my library at home, rereading Emerson. Thoughts of the quiet, delightful hours before me had brought me to a happy and contented frame of mind when, soon after luncheon, I was about to settle myself into a book. Madeline came in and said, I'm so glad, dear. You're, you're going to be home this afternoon. Sarah is away, and I am just remembered an appointment at the dressmaker. So you can keep an eye on the, on the children while I'm gone. It will only be for a short time, you know. But... My dear, I answered in a disappointed tone, I was going to be reading Emerson and the children. Oh, they'll be as good as gold, she declared, interrupting my protest. There really no, no, there's really no need in looking after, after at all, but I shall feel e easier to know that you're in the same room with them. They won't interfere with your reading a particle. <clears throat> Send them here then, I said resigned, and presently they came, Kitty, Mabel, and Charlie Boy, as lovely a trio as ever delighted a proud father's heart. But Emerson. Goodbye, dears, cried Magdalene, appearing in hat and jacket, kissing us all briskly in turn. The children won't bother you, will you, darlings? And you can have a lovely, quiet time in their company. It's so seldom you can enjoy them, you know. Yes, I said doubtfully. They can play about the library without annoying me at all, and if one of them breaks a leg, I'll send for the doctor. So don't worry, dear. She laughed at the idea of accidents and bustled, bustled away, saying that she would not be long. The little ones were examining my collection of shells, so I lighted my pipe, leaned back in my, my lounging chair, and began reading. Suddenly there was a gasp. A shill cry of alarm from Kitty, and I sprang to my feet to find Charlie Boy choking desperately and quite black in the face. I slapped him on the back, held his head downward by the heels, and used other vigorous measures, with the satisfying result of seeing him again breathe free freely. What was it, I asked, trembling slightly from the nervous excitement at the narrowness of the escape? He swallowed a shell, said Kitty, one of those teeny pointy ones. Didn't swallow it, exclaimed Charlie. Coughed it up. I closed the cabinet and locked it. Then I glanced around, and seeing nothing else that seemed liable to be swallowed, I returned to my book. Presently, I noticed Kitty, my demure little woman, standing by my chair. For a, a man who time is constantly occupied by business cares, I believe myself to be especially fond and considerate father. But when I had a family, to, but then I have a family of remarkably bright and attractive children. Won't you read to us, Papa? Asked Kitty as I looked up. You wouldn't care for Emerson, I answered. But I got a new fairy book, she said that Uncle Hen Harry gave to me on my birthday. He will probably want to read it to you himself, my dear, I replied. Then, as she still lingered, I added, I'm very much engaged just now, little one. She went back to the others, and I had a few moments of peace. Then Mabel sprang into my lap, her yellow curls sweeping my face and her chubby arms knocking the book from my grasp. Oh, Papa, she cried in enthusiasm. Let's play dames. I don't know any any games check kitty knows answered the elf clapping her hands we'll ping we'll play ring round rollies can't you play without me i inquired when you's a ways we has to she says but it's such fun to play with big man come on pop i don't want us to play ring around rosies i'll play we can play london bridge i guess You'll run away, Chick, and not bother Papa, I returned as gently as I could. I want to be I want to be quiet and to read my book. She slid off my lap, pouting, and stamped her foot. Mabel really was something of a temper. 
You ain't a bit of fun, she declared. I wish Mama was here. She's fun. I didn't answer. Certainly I was no mood to be fun at the moment. There was a short period of quiet before someone nudged my elbow. Charlie Boy was standing beside me. He stared into my face with his big blue eyes in a rather embarrassing fashion, but it, but did not speak. After a while, I was nudged again. This was annoying me, annoying when I was reading. I looked down. I want to smoke a pipe, said Charlie Boy in a sweet and subdued voice. You're too young, my boy. He eyed my pipe and the curling smoke thoughtfully. My, ba- my mouth is big enough, he said. Certainly, I answered, but children never smoke. Only big grown-up men smoke. He seemed to be considering this clear and positive statement with much earnestness, so I raised my book again. I want to smoke, said Charlie. Boy, I paid no attention. I want to smoke a pipe, more loudly. Charlie boy, I said sternly, if you don't let me alone, I'll spank you. You can't smoke a pipe. The blue eyes never flinched, but regarded me intently. I want to... Charlie boy. Here Kitty came and seized his hand. Come on, Charlie boy, she said gently. We're going to play doll in the window. Papa isn't being comfortable today. He's cross, declared my son, frankly, but he let Kitty lead him to the window, where with the aid of two must and much bedraggled dolls, they seemed able to amuse himself perfectly. Somehow the various interruptions had rendered my nerves and destroyed, and destroyed my desire to read. I leaned back in my chair and dreamily regarded the three blessed infants their mother had declared would cause me no trouble at all. I think I must have sunk into a doze when my attention was aroused by hearing Kitty say, Well then, I'll tell a story. Charlie Boy clapped his hands and climbed to the arm of the little woman's chair, while Mabel curled up in the window seat and prepared to listen earnestly. Once upon a time, began Kitty, there was a bad man. Ah, exclaimed Charlie Boy gleefully. I felt his uh, his big eyes were turning my way. He didn't like to do anything that anyone else wanted to do, continued Kitty, but he liked to sit in a big chair and read a book that isn't interesting to anyone else. And smoke a pipe, added Charlie Boy. Yes, when anyone asked him to join a game so he would get, wouldn't get dull and stupid, he told him to run away. And not bother him, said Mabel, sitting up and shaking her curls indignantly. Yes, he didn't want to be happy. He just wanted to be bad and 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 smoke a pipe, said Charlie Boy. Well, resumed Kitty, this bad man by got so disagreeable that folks didn't want to be around him. So what do you suppose they did? Spanked him, said Charlie Boy. Took away his horrid book, said Mabel. No, they put him in a big cage where he could stay all by himself and not be bothered. And where there's no little girls to love him, said Mabel. And they smashed his nasty pipe, added Charlie Boy to intense, with intense delight. Of course, continued Kitty demurely, he couldn't bother anyone else while he was in the cage, and he had time to think how bad he was to his children, which their mother said would be as good as gold as perfect treasures. Serves him right, said Mabel emphatically. And there he stayed till he was sorry, concluded the storyteller. I wondered, as I sat there listening, if I ought not get up and redeem myself by playing and romping with these youths, youngsters to their heart's content. But, as I reflected, they were mischievous. They were a mischievous lot, and their precious story was not only unfulfilling but a blackmail of character. I resolved, therefore, not to be influenced by their slanderous insinuations. Ha! Huh, gasped Charlie Boy in a hushed but tragic tone. His sisters looked at him inquiriously. Let's build a cage, he whispered. I closed my eyes, lest the conspirators would learn that I had overheard them, and soon I detected a soft, scraping sound as a chair was slowly pushed over the floor toward the place where I sat. There was subdued giggles and an occasional bang as the furniture struck together, but I gave no indication, no evidence of being awake. Finally, I heard Mabel whisper hoarsely, He's caged! 
The bad man can't get out till he's sorry. Then I unclosed my lids just far enough to peek between them and found myself surrounded by a circle of chairs, stools, and settees, firm, firmly hemming me in. Suddenly I heard a crash, a chorus of hor horrified exclamations, and I knew my writing table had gone over and its contents s scattered far and wide. Still I did not move a hair's breadth, but sat quietly and reflected that the table had contained my tobacco jar, several bottles of ink, and a student lamp, all which must have taken a rather a rather pretty muss on the on the rug. The children sat at last were quiet, and peeping at them again, I saw them in a huddled and frightened group by the window. I knew they were being more punished by my inaction than I had had if I had scolded them severely. So I maintained my pretend my, con my pretend composure while they looked at at me and each other in dismay. The ominous silence was broken by Magdalene's fresh, brisk voice, and I gave a sigh of relief as my wife appeared in the doorway. "'What does all this mean, sweet cakes? What game are you playing with Papa?' she asked pleasantly, without se seeming to observe the overturned table. "'We're playing bad man,' said Mabel in her softest voice. "'Papa's it,' said Charlie Boy. Their mother actually smiled upon this disputed rubble rabble and then she turned to me and, and inquired sweetly have you a good time dear i haven't read a page were the children were the children good she continued anxiously i glanced around upon the wreck and the disorder as good as gold i said and the bad man was uh, first appearance was in the home magazine february 1901 and it was reprinted in the bum bugle in autumn 1968.